The following program contains testimonies of true stories by people who have received divine healing through the ministry of VPA. They gave these voluntarily without any directives from VPA. We advise you to always seek your medical practitioner's advice before you make any decisions based on this program. Hello and welcome to Miracle Hour with our pastor Alex Omokadu. Thank you for joining us today. Today we have a very, very special guest who can tell us about the amazing power that God has shown in his life. God has taken him from the brink of death to life. You will be amazed by this testimony. It is powerful. It is awesome. It is showing God's mighty, mighty power where doctors gave up and God took over. Hallelujah. Joining me today is the man in question, Danny. Hello, Danny. Thank Hi. you for joining us today. Thank you very much. And his friend of 37 years who was with Danny throughout this horrendous ordeal in his life, Richard. Richard, thank you for joining us. And the catalyst that brought Richard and Daniel to us at VPA is Nina. Nina was the catalyst that God used to bring Danny to life through the God of VPA. Nina, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much, and it's a real pleasure to be here, so yeah. Thank, thank you. you. If I may just take a step back to when we first knew about Danny and we saw the pictures of Danny in a coma. Uh -huh. So if we can just take a step back to find out what brought about this condition. I'm gonna pass you to my dad um, because he's the, the person that was speaking to his son when Danny became ill. <clears throat> I got a phone call from his son, Simon. Mm -hmm. Uh, who I've known since he was a young man of about 12. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, Rich, I don't know what to do. He said, Dad's on the floor. I can't get him up off the floor. I said, where? He said, in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So I said, um, how long has he been there? He said, about six hours. Wow. I said, why have you just called me now? Mm -hmm. He said, well, I didn't like to bother you. He said, but I thought I'd better phone you. Mm -hmm. I said, call an ambulance straight away. There mm -hmm. must be a problem. Mm -hmm. He said, I told Dad I was going to call an ambulance, and he said, no, leave it. Mm -hmm. And I said, take no notice, call an ambulance, Simon. Yes. Called an ambulance. They took him into hospital immediately. Mm -hmm. And for some strange reason, they let him out about three hours later. Right, said he was okay to go home. Yes. He went home, and the following day, Simon phoned me again. He said, the old man's on the floor again. I said, what do you mean? He was in hospital last night. He said, I know. But he said, they let him out. He's come home. He's crashed out on the floor again. Wow. In the kitchen. Yes. I said, oh, Jesus. I, mean, I said, um, you better phone an ambulance again. He said, I don't like to. Because Simon's not got, he's got problems. In okay, the so okay. I said, okay, I'll phone the ambulance. So I phoned the ambulance up. Told him I was his friend and where he lived. And they went round there, picked him up again, took him into the hospital, and I phoned him up at about half past ten that night. Yes. He had his phone with him. Mm -hmm. Simon told me he had his phone. Mm -hmm. And now you can have your phone in the ward with you, can't you? Yes. So I phoned him up, and he answered the phone like there was nothing wrong at all. Mm -hmm. He said, hello. I said, you're all right, Danny? He went, yeah. He said, I'm absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't know what I'm doing in here. I said, well, Danny, you've, you've collapsed twice. You've spent 12 hours on the floor in all. I mm -hmm. said, best, you're in the best place. You're going to have to stay there until they say you're OK to come out. Yes. He said, I'll be out tomorrow. I'm fine. I said, OK, well, if you are, phone me. I'll come and pick you up. Mm -hmm. The next thing was we got a call stating that he'd slipped into a coma. That same night that you spoke no, to him? No, in the morning. In the morning. He mm -hmm. slipped into a coma. Mm -hmm. Now he had um, septicemia, which is a killer anyway, yes. pneumonia, the coma, and also his kidneys was only functioning at 5%. Goodness me. Out of 100. But his lungs weren't working either. No, they weren't working So either. his body was basically shutting was down. Shutting down totally. Yes. 
So I made an appointment to see the doctor who was in charge of him at the time, a Dr. Barclay. Mm-hmm. And I went along to see Dr. Barclay and I said, you know, he's, he's in a bad way. Obviously, I could see he's in a bad way. Yes. He said, I'm afraid so. He said, um, a very, very bad way. I said, what is his chances? He said, I would give him 5% if he makes it through today. Wow. So that was the first day. And he stayed in that coma for three weeks and six days. Goodness. Without opening his eyes. Wow. So the doctors expected him to pass yeah, away. Yeah, they did. They expected him to die away. The nurses, sisters, all sorts said to me, you can't take <clears throat> films, you can't take photos, but I've done it anyway. I thought, I've got to do this. Because I thought, you know, what's the good of someone being ill? Uh, I mean, if he does recover, at least I can show someone Mm -hmm. that, you know, he's recovered from this. Yes. Plus, you can show family and not in the country what he was like and so on and so forth. Anyway, I took the photos anyway and and the videos. And we used to go in every day. And when I say we, I mean me and Nina and his family and uh, his grandchildren some of the times and that. And the nurse gave us this Mm -hmm. book. Yeah, oh, packed. Some old packed with family and there. friends and... Some days you couldn't get in there. So she gave us this book and said, would you like to keep a record of every time you go in and everyone else get everyone else to do the same? Yes. Which is, which is what we did do. Yes. So I've got mine in there and loads of other people have got theirs. I'm in there about ten times, I think. <laughs> and um, so but we were going there and obviously... He, he won't come as minutes at all. His eyes non-responsive. Shut. Yes. No, yes. I mean, I mean, it was almost it was gone. Mm. Yes. It was gone mm. for sure. It was gone. But... And then Nina went in this particular night. She come to the church here, wasn't I it? Come to the all night prayer. Yeah, she come to so the all night. Uh, to the, yes. You know, what, mm. not, what inspired you? What, what prompted you? What prompted me yeah. in my heart? Obviously, I've known Danny virtually all of my life anyway. He had a daughter. I see his sons in the waiting room. Mm -hmm. I felt the heaviness in everybody. And I'm Christian. I do believe in the power of prayer. And I've been coming, when I came, to this church on different occasions. You see what God is doing. I've seen the testimonies. People stand there that have been healed from cancer. Yes. um, I come here. So you have not seen people healed of cancer yet? Yeah, I've seen people being healed from cancer in this church. And I knew that if anything was going to break through in the spiritual in my heart, God was telling me to come to VPI. Yes. And I come and I work six days a week. I run my father's business. Mm-hmm. And I decided I'm going to come anyway. And I would have to have been in the shop the next day as well come to the all-night prayers, waited. I didn't have a testimony, Mm -hmm. and I thought, I'm going to stand up and queue up anyway, because I was expecting that something was going to break through in the miraculous. God knew your faith. Yeah, I I come here expecting that miracle for Danny. Yes. And I knew the only way he was going to live was we were speaking in the shop one day with another of Danny's friends, Peter, Mm And I said, look, he's, he's not dead yet, because everyone was basically talking about his funeral. Yes, more or less. because so the doctors had already well, given yeah. up. The well, doctors yeah. had given and up. And I said, look, don't talk like that. He's, he's, he's not dead yet. Mm. And my dad said, the only way he's going to live is by a miracle. And mm. it was like pennies dropped. And that's what, that's, what, that's what God <laughs> needs sometimes just to test your faith no, because yeah. that's all that's needed yeah. a miracle and Richard the words came out of your mouth he needs a miracle and God's saying I'm going to show I you my power no chance at all yes none at all everyone was just fighting I this week everyone was talking off. about the funeral mm. yeah in the shop in our shop <coughs> uh, another of Danny's best friends he's known Peter <coughs> over 40 years was saying well what are we going to do when he dies what everyone are they going to be like you know it was just a conf- 
words that I just Including didn't want to hear. Yes, yes. I yes. thought yes. they'd switch the machine off before too much longer. Yes. Because he'd been on it then over three weeks. I thought they've got to switch it off. They can't leave block the bed up mm -hmm. with Danny for really too much longer because yes. nothing was working. Yeah. It still wasn't working. So what did the doctors actually say to you? Did they actually say there is no hope? What he said was we can only keep the machine on so long. Yes. Right, he said he's but he's not responding yes. at all. This was his surgeon, Dr. Yes. Barclay. Wow. So I said, well, you know, what can I say? Mm. I said, you know, you've got to do what you've got to do. Yeah, so they were just waiting to turn off yeah, the machines. Said, yeah. We've been very patient. I've done everything I can do, and he's not responding at all. Yes. And then, Nina, for you to have that inspiration to say, no, I know the God of VPA, and the yeah. God of VPA can turn this situation around. You were determined. You just said, working six days a week, but you were still determined to come to London to the God of VPA. Yeah, there was only one way, and that was God. Yes. And I knew this church carried an anointing. Yes. I, I feel it every time I come so here. So now tell us exactly what happened. Mm. With the, what happened? What I come, I, I bought the oil, I bought the juice, I bought the cloth as the mantle. Mm -hmm. um, I waited for Pastor Alex to, to see everybody that you know, need to see him and give their testimony. Yes. When I got to F Father Alex, I said to him that um, I didn't have a testimony, but I will have a testimony. Yes. My dad's friend is in a coma and he's in hospital, mm. and I've come here, he needs a miracle. Wow. Pastor Alex <clears throat> told the... Um, the the items, anointed one? Yeah. Yes. He prayed that Danny would live. So you already had the mantle, yeah, the anointed yeah, oil, everything. and our daddy prayed I over left those. The church, happy in the knowledge and in my heart that something was going to happen. Yes. When I got to the church, the following, um, hospital, it, uh, sorry, the hospital, the following evening, um, I put the cloth on Danny's head, and I prayed that the Father God of APA. Amen. Would, would, breathe life into Danny Amen. and for him to receive his miracle. Yes. And it, within one minute of putting the cloth on his head, the nurse was there, the nurse's name was Simon, mm -hmm. same as Danny's son. Yes. And he opened his eyes up wide open. After um, three and a half weeks. After three and a half weeks. Of being in a coma. After one minute of putting the cloth on Danny's head. So it was the, instant. The impartation happened. That yes. is truly Instant beautiful. healing. He received an impartation. Yes. I needed a sign. Yes. And after that happened, I thought, he's going to live. Yes. I just felt like jumping up and down with joy. Yes, and yes. it was, I knew in my heart of hearts that he was going to live 100%. That God is and real. And about another... 30 seconds after that, because I'm saying to the nurse, did you see that? Did you see what's just happened? Yes. And the nurse was saying, it's not possible. You shouldn't be able to do that at all. Wow, so amen. I told him about the church, coming up here for the all-night prayers. Yes. He's kind of listening, but thinking, Hello. you know. And then Danny's eyes opened again. And I said, I said he's... I knew he was alive. Yes. Because it was like looking at a dead man. <laughs> wow. He's dead. He's, his fingers didn't even move. <laughs> yes. Nothing moved before. Wow. It's just machines but the moment everywhere. He brought the power of God. The power of God it. ignited, and I knew Hallelujah. he was going to live. Amen. I knew it. And I left the hospital. I found his son Simon straight away, and said, Simon, you're not going to believe what's happened. Mm. Your dad. I've put the cloth on his head from the church. I said, and I've prayed a prayer, and your dad's eyes have opened. I said, the male nurse was there called Simon. Mm. So when you go into the hospital, ask him, because he'll tell you. Yes. I said, your dad's going to be all right. He said, oh, no, don't say that, Nina. What if he's not? I said, listen, Simon. I said, do you want to start believing? Mm -hmm. I said, I wouldn't phone you up on a whim. I said, your dad is going to live, and he's going to be all Amen. right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, this, is, this is a miracle. <laughs> it was a miracle, yeah. and yeah, praise be to God. Amen. Do, 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 people do ask, is this the miracles? This is a miracle. If you are watching me all over the world, a man that was dead, 
and God was able to intervene. Amen. You have what she said. She believed that there was power of God in VPA. Amen. That the doctors, against all hope, against all hope, mm. she still believed that with God, all things are possible. And she ran to VPA and took the mantle and gave it to a man of God. No, and the man of God lifted it up to Jesus. And Jesus intervened. Amen. And a dead man that was dead within a, within a minute <laughs> opened his eyes. And the, 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 the nurses were saying, No, it's impossible. But the woman said, Yes, it's possible. This is what you call miracle. Amen. If you are watching us here and you are still believing, Oh, it's impossible. But not with doctor, it's impossible. With men, it's impossible. But not with God. Amen. With God, cancer can be healed. Amen. With God, miracle is real. Hallelujah. Amen. What a mighty God to serve. What a you mighty know, God. Daniel, I told you the truth. God will not allow you to be living mm. without an assignment. Does that mean? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, many pastors did not get in this way. Mm. But I'm telling you, it's, it's a proof. It's an evidence that God wants to use you to, 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 to give an answer to people asking questions now. Yes. That if miracles still happen. So, Dan, when you wake up from the... From the, from from the coma, coma, yes. From bed, what came to you first? What was, what was in your mind when you wake up? Well, when I woke, woke up, I, I didn't, I'd been asleep. Do you understand? Well, you thought you were sleeping. I, I'm sleeping for three weeks. So you were not of this world. You no, were sleeping. Was, you were yeah, just somewhere yeah, else. I was somewhere else. Yeah. So when I woke up, um, I was just surprised, really. And um, How did you feel in your body? Oh, no, when I woke up, I couldn't walk. The, the, my legs didn't work, and they used a lift to take me in and out of bed. And then Nina explained to me what she... She'd come to the church and I put the anointed cloth on my head and I opened my eyes and I thought, well, I've got to come down to, to the church to thank the, you, thank the congregation for yes. saving my life. Amen. Which, which, um, God use that. God use that. Yeah, through... Um, God use that. Yeah. God, God, God use that to bring love to you. Yeah. How about the mighty God be served? Yeah, it's great. And how did your friends and family, what, how did they react? Well, I've, uh, because the doctors had given up yeah, the, hope, the, the, the and now your 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 eyes are open yeah. and you're no, alive. They're giving up. They're already planning a funeral. The no, funeral, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah. Amen. Oh, 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 amazing. Yeah, but well, then then they put me on on a diet. <coughs> excuse me. They put me on a dialysis machine, yeah. <laughs> which is uh, they change your blood every second day for four hours. You have to be there. So I said to the the nurse, "How long am I am I on this?" She said, well, that's your new kidney there, that machine. I said, what? I said, how long for? She said, forever. I said, no, I've got hope. Amen. Anyhow, I'm off the dialysis. And the doctor congratulated me. Not many people get off it. I'm off it at the moment, you know what I'm saying? So I'm hoping everything's still okay. Yes. So another miracle. Because usually, yes, people who are on dialysis yeah. are on there for the rest of their life. Yeah. So, so God is just showing how yeah. impossible can be made it's hard, hard, hard for me to take in. Uh, you, you, too many things happening, do you yes. understand? So my mind was confused. You know what happened is that it made your love whole again. Mm. It made, you know what, thing? you went to coma mm. for yeah. the sake of the sickness. Amen. Yeah. But right, you should die yes. in that sickness. Yeah. But immediately when the power of God came, mm. it, you that was that sickness sent to coma. Mm. Yeah. Power of God came. And you are out of dialysis. This is amazing. Yes. He ignited the life back into Daniel. Yes. For sure. And with the kidney dialysis, Danny came to convalesce at our family home mm -hmm. for, for nearly three weeks. And he came home one day looking a bit, you know, stressed. And I said to him, what's the matter? Mm. He said, well... I've been told today that I'm going to be on kidney dialysis for the rest of my life. Yes. I said, don't believe that. Mm -hmm. So he said to me, well, he said, I, I've got to believe it. He said, because that's what I've been told. Mm. I said, Danny, I said, the God 
that has healed you doesn't do miracles mm. by half. Mm. He's going to complete your healing. Amen. I said, I think it's time I give you a, a CD to listen to from the church that I was playing to you while you was in a coma every day doing wow. deliverance prayers from you. Wow. Him. So whilst he was in a coma, yeah. you had a yeah. CD of one of our services yeah. yes. with earphones yes. playing that to Daniel yeah. in the hospital. In the hospital. Yeah. Wow. And I told anyone or nurses or even family that, that may have come to just stand, they might have stayed five, ten minutes and leave because it was pretty pointless even really just being there. Yes. And I just said, I'm just playing some music that he likes. And they just... No, no, excuse me, but <laughs> most, well, most of the British people don't believe in mm. Jesus. No. Mm. But how come about you believe me about Jesus? Because there's been many things that's happened in my life. And as a family, um, my father is the one that actually asked me to go to church a number of years ago. I didn't even have anyone to go to church with. I never mm. knew any Christian friends, mm. just ordinary school friends. And I did go to a church in Margate. Yeah. And I asked Jesus into my life by my cousin, Barbara, mm -hmm. who lived in um, Essex. Mm -hmm. And Christians circled round me, laid hands on me, prayed on me in tongues, yes. which I'd never heard before. Yes. And it was very powerful. Mm. And I, after that... Um, time with God that night that I shared and asking Jesus into my life something changed Hello. in my heart yes. and I felt peace Amen. Felt peace. I felt peace within me Hallelujah. and there was a, a situation in our family and everything turned out good Around. Yes. Everything, Amen. everything turned out good yeah. what, what, what the mighty God was that Amen. You know what you just said Things were not working well. At the moment she accepted Jesus into her life, peace came. Amen. That's exactly what this country needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. If this country accepts Jesus in their life, what is terrorist? Amen. What is, what is evil? Mm -hmm. When you have peace, not going to perform against you. Shall prosper. Life. Amen. That is, that is the Holy, Holy Ghost is now. Holy Spirit started working, is, is that working your life? Yeah, and a Christian lady started coming into our shop and asking me to go to church with her. And one day I did. I went there on an Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then that was it. It gave me the confidence to go to church. I'd walk going anywhere else. I'd walk into a pub um, and not, not feel embarrassed. Yes. But to walk into a church... The church might be feeling bad. And this is what happens with a, a lot of young yeah. people I find, like out there in the world, in the secular world, yeah. they feel embarrassed carrying a Bible, they feel embarrassed walking into a church, but yes, it's very easy to walk into the nightclub or walk into the pub. But exactly. to hear you speak of the goodness of God and to hear people listen to the power of God, this is, this is real life. This yeah. was a man who was at death door, who was planning his funeral. His funeral was being planned. <laughs> Doctors had given up. And God said, when man says they can do no more, God says, this is where I step in. Hallelujah. This is where I step in. And Nina, you were the catalyst that was used. God has a way of orchestrating everything Definitely. and bringing people together Definitely. to praise his name, to show his glory. I because agree. our God in VPA is about Evidence. You see, there was yes. a time we were there. Yes. And we, 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 we part of us then, when a, a, a lady brought a casa daughter. Yes. What happened? Tell the church. Yes, there was a cancer, the, the young girl. Yeah. There was a young girl who was riddled with cancer. Yeah. Pretty, pretty yeah. young girl who was riddled with cancer. The doctors had given up all hope. Cancer was all over her body. And when our daddy was preaching, the Holy Spirit spoke to him to give this young girl communion. It was communion Sunday. Yeah. And the mother, the mother came and gave her testimony where daddy put the young girl on the altar and fed her, as the Holy Spirit had instructed, fed her the communion, the anointed oil. Yes. And 
couple of weeks later, the mother returned. Found no more cancer. The doctors said they couldn't understand it. They found no more cancer. on the Monday, there was nothing. Church is It was so obvious. I said, God, I place her on the altar. Look at what a smoke girl like this. What has she done? Look at what they have said about this girl. And I placed her on the altar. I knew that they would come back with that testimony. Wow. Let's I talk. This is a miracle. This is a miracle. What a pretty girl. Let, let's hear from you. Um, well, it all started in July and they, you know, she was bedridden, severe back pain. They couldn't tell me what was wrong. Then they told me, uh, after her second biopsy, they told me she had spinal TB. And then the results for that came back negative as well. And then she had another biopsy a few weeks ago and then when we went back they told me yes she's got she's got cancer and then obviously we came here you know we've been praying she had the communion everything we went back on the monday and they said she's all clear we've retested she's all clear Shut jesus, jesus! jesus! Set the power in the blood of jesus that they are um, a small girl like this when I got the, 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 the communion, she was so fast and drinking in the altar. Hey! Hey! You see how powerful God is. You see how God can erase what men are scared of. Whatever you, that you have come here with today, they will drop in the name of Jesus. Shh. That's what I pity people that joke with spiritual exercise. But look at God. Look at, look at God. Look at. Son of God has set free. He's free forever. Shut Jesus. This young innocent girl. Right. Cancer gone. You know, people, could, people could not believe. But this is done now. Yes. A man that was that the, the only planning is funeral. Yes. I know it's this incredible that he's here today and he looks a picture of health. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, he's got his 
how personal. No, you, ca- you can't believe that was said that name mm-hmm. yeah. that was lying dead. Mm-hmm. That, that is alive today. Yes. That's ready to go and preach the word of God mm-hmm. to people. Yes. Uh, and, and, uh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I was going to say non believers might say, well, Where's the evidence, mm-hmm. right? Where's the evidence? But yeah. this is the proof. There Not you the go. Evidence. There you <laughs> go. The proof. Because you can have evidence stacked this high. That's right. Nothing. That's right. You can, He's living proof. He's living proof. Hallelujah. With, in my opinion. Yeah, That's I right. Tell people, you can argue with my principle, mm. but you cannot argue with the proof. Absolutely. No, so the proof, you can argue that Jesus is not alive, mm. but it's the proof that Jesus is alive. He's alive. That's right. Hallelujah. What well, we don't have to God make lies, wouldn't we? We serve. Yes, amen. You know. that, that name, I'm telling you, this is, you need to it's preach the to God. It's I've ever seen anyway, in my life. I've never seen a mirror. There you go. Uh, oh, look at that Oh, oh, oh see the end. That's what she went Absolutely. That was what gave her boldness. Yes. We see it here on yeah. daily basis in First Corinthians 2, verse 1 to 5. Mm. Paul wrote this. Paul. Paul said, And I, brethren, when I came to you, I came not with a thousand, with a excellence of speech of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. This is a testimony of God. Verse 2 says, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Verse 4 said, And, and my speech and my preaching was not with a thousand words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit Amen. of power, Amen. that your faith should not start in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So we don't give up. You see, this is, this is the word of God. Mm-hmm. If you listen to what everybody I know. Said, yes. you would lose hope. But what would you, excuse me, that, uh, Nina, if the doctor said, yeah. that's, that's their job. Yeah. The doctor said, no hope. But you, because of the spirit, you said, you said something came upon you. Have been attacked spiritually, mm-hmm. yeah. and it exists. It, Spiritual attack exists. It a curse. Yes, you could call it other names if you wanted to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I didn't want for Danny to die, and there for there to be another one that the devil has won. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I wanted Danny to come through this. Yes, for him to know that there's mm. God. Amen. For him to see the light, and for his family to understand that their God is. God has done something Amen. in their lives where they've suffered in the past mm. with certain things that's happened in their family. Yes. God's restored that. He's taken away their um where they're the living. reproach. Yeah. Mm. The, the, Nina. Yeah, you, you know what, what has happened? What has happened right now? If Daniel was still alive, by the way, at that time, Daniel would not be here. What brought Daniel here now is because of what happened to him, and now is fearful. You want to know this God that brought me alive? Does that mean? And God he did has. not bring you alive for nothing. Yeah. You have, he brought you alive. So, for example, let me tell you, I never knew, I never knew I had any power. To me, I don't still have power. Whatever I do, God back it up. I never knew I had anything in me. Yeah? But when I was in the world. But now that I'm, I'm in Christ, just like then I said, something came upon him, peace. That's the Holy Spirit that came upon him. That's the Holy Spirit that even lead then and him, saw you in, in hospital. Nobody saw you dead, yeah. but she saw you alive because yeah. the Spirit of God, he said, ah. Right. You stop him? That was how I was. I never knew I had anything and I can give anything to anybody because I was a captive. I was nobody. I was my life was miserable. I was eating from those be. I never knew I can offer anything to the world to anybody. Yeah? But by the time I'm going to read the scripture, that is what you need to be doing now. Read the scripture, then the Holy Spirit will not be ministering to you about himself. 
because the Bible is God Himself. And when you read it, there's a spirit that comes out of it that will be working through you. Exactly. And the first day, I went, when God told me to go and preach, to go and preach, I, 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 I was shot. I went to the hospital. When I go to the hospital, and I had the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> what do I do? He said, lay hand on the sick. I don't even know what how to pray. <laughs> what do I, but I had the voice, say, lay your hand on the sick. So I obeyed the Holy Spirit by laying my hand on the sick. As I lay hand on the sick, I lift one hand up, lift another one to the sick. That the man was the woman was a kuma. And something came upon me. Power of God came upon me. I was going to the one that was sick. Instantly, the woman that was telling what a kuma opened her eyes. Everybody was screaming. I was wondering, what have I done? The power of God. She got up and confessed Jesus Christ. So you have to keep going now. Because what about God? You, 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 you just said, <laughs> excuse me. People that know you might not believe you. Yeah? But they, they will believe you because they know who you used to be before. Yeah? Right. yeah? But to me, people don't believe you believe because I was a bad boy. I was a yeah. father. I was stealing rubbish. People around me, they could not believe me. They are wondering, what has come upon this man? What has changed him? But if you know, they start coming to the church when they heard what people were saying about me now. That is God walking. So I know you are wondering now, what will I do now? Go and search the scripture. You must. The Bible. You must. And God will be leading you what to do. Because you are Amen. not alive. You are dead. You are dead. Yeah. You are not alive for yourself. You are not alive for people. For people now. To give them hope. Because this has been broadcast all over the world. And see for yourself. You will see the pictures of when Daniel was in a coma. And now he's here alive with us on the sofa. He's, there's no Zimmer frame. There's no walking stick. There's no dialysis machine. This is just him in his glorious blue suit. <laughs> preaching and saying, I'm alive. And God used Nina as the catalyst. Because yeah. God will use someone. There is always someone God will use to orchestrate and bring us to him to let us know that he is the one and true living God. See, I love using the scripture. Mm. God, they are alive. Amen. Genesis 1, verse 26. You know what, about life, we've got something, we believers, we've got something we don't know. Mm. Every believer is met to walk, every believer is come to demonstrate the power of God. She has done that now. She just demonstrated the power of God now Amen. by saying, tell the doctor, I am coming. Hold on a bit, I'm coming. You went to the church, I took the mantle, I came back, I put the mantle on your head, demonstrating the power of God, Amen. which you are called to do equally, which you, look at her. Nina said, the father is risen up to Jesus. Genesis 1, 26. He said, and God said, and God said, <coughs> let us make men in our own image mm -hmm. after our likeness. Mm -hmm. And let, every, let, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, mm -hmm. over the fire of the, of the end, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every crippled thing that crippled upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So we, when you give your love to Jesus, you enter into a realm of power. Amen. But divine heritage. It is your ability to keep into the realm of the power that determines how you will walk in demonstration of the power of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You put the devil to shame. Amen. 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 Sit children and teach them giving it my best shot. Yes. Danny. Yes. You've got to come through this. Wow. Yes. Because yeah. you believed in God I totally. You never doubted. I believed in this church. Yes. And the power that I felt in this place. 
And for me to come here as a white lady mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. and be in an African church, mm -hmm. it was like a fish out of water. Yes, to yes. To begin with. Yes. But then you get to know people. Yes. Their smiles, their hearts, yes. their love. Yes. Everything, the welcoming that you get when you come. And God home, gives a spirit of familiarity. Yeah. So it's no longer you an unusual it's surrounding. Like a, and that's what God is. God is about love. God is about love. Hey, 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 look, look yes. what I love. Yes. Um, she's, this girl's an evangelist. Yes, you are. No, 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 listen. Yes. She just made sure about the black church. Yeah. Yeah. For her to come, then stay with us in mm. the black church. Mm. You know, it's not easy. No, no, it's not. It's not. Yeah. But it's not. What's for a Christian? You don't. You don't care about. Black and what? Yeah. That's what this country need to come back to Christ. Amen. But once we're in Christ, you don't think about black or um, what? You, no, you love. You, you know, God is just about love. You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself, regardless of black, white. It doesn't matter, you know. That, but that is different. The doctrine is the same. Yes. But the teaching is different. The prayers are so strong. Yes. Um, this is a deliverance church. Deliverance, this is a deliverance church. Deliverance. And we have a true man of God here yeah. who hears from the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. who Hallelujah. acts on the Holy Spirit. Oh, He's more yes. spiritual. He's not carnal. He's a spirit man. I can actually say I have been in VPA for three years now and I have been a born again Christian for over 20 years. Wow. And I have never, I left a church that I'd been in for 20 years yeah. to come to VPA because this is a true man of God. He demonstrates the power of God. Just like how you correctly said, this church, God has healed cancer. Yeah. He has healed kidney problems, he healed everything. This is a deliverance regardless of what your challenge is. God delivers you in VPA through our true man of God, Pastor Alex Amokadu. You will never see another preacher like him. And sorry, Daddy, I have to say um, that. Uh, 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 you uh, uh, are. What I'm thinking, mm. I want you to have a lot of this. Yes. A lot yes. of people like this. Yes. Because this, I'm telling you the truth, this country now don't believe anything about Jesus. No. No. They don't believe anything about Jesus. They don't know God. They don't know even God. Exactly. Which this is a thing, shame because this is a Christian thing, country. Imagine. What are we talking about? Mm. Look at the world today. Mm. It's, everybody's confused. Yes. You don't know who's after you. Yes. You don't know who's in your front. Yes. You don't know who's in your middle because they abandon God. God, amen. Yeah, yeah. But when I came to this church yes. and saw all the happy people, I thought, to myself, why are they all happy? I'm never happy. Yes. You know, when you did the communion, you know, everyone was going to communion. I thought, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of people all smiling and happy. Yes. And I thought, well, you know, it's great. Yes. And it's this wonderful church. And although I, I, I say I was a Catholic, mm -hmm. is that the word? Because yeah. I'd like So past this, tense, you yes, was I'd a Catholic. Yes, I'm going to join this church. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And tell my friends and, uh, you know. Everything. And that's what it's about. It's no, about it, telling it everybody. Begun. Yes. You still do your job. The, the churches where I've been with Nina, just totally flat. Yes. No. Life. Joy the power all. of God is no not there. Joy yes. Mm -hmm. And the only ones in there what were smiling were black people. Mm. The white faces as long as a kite. Yeah. Oh. You could see them fishing about in their pocket for a couple of coins. Yeah. To put in. People oh dear. Who had loads of money, but they didn't want to put nothing in. Oh dear. Most of them, in my opinion, was going there to keep up appearances. Yes. 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 That's it. And that's what no some people it. do. Yeah, yeah. And people. Yeah. But as they, well, there is joy. There is joy in serving God. Amen. I will not, I will not be joyful now. Amen. It's all about Christianity. Amen. It was dead. And now we are joy because it's alive. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Why and for everybody at home watching this now, I would say for you to just come to this church, VPA, and just come and experience what they have here. This is a miracle church. Miracles do happen here. You don't just hear about them. They're actually happening here. And if you didn't come and you couldn't come, watch the program. Get someone to come for you. But you do need to come and experience this because it's something that I don't 
think I, I've, I could ever find anywhere else. Pastor Alex, all the congregation, they make you so welcome. You feel the love and peace as soon as you come in this place. And I know that for me, if ever I need any help from God and the miracles that, that I believe will happen for you as well, you need to come to VPA. So don't miss out. Yeah, I'm 70 odd years old now. I've, I'm 70 odd years old. I've never come to church really in my life apart from Sunday school, things like that, and maybe weddings and funerals. But I've got to say that, um, to come here, this is only my second time. Very, very uplifting. And the first time I came, I, I saw Pastor Alex, um, perform miracles there which I wouldn't have believed. If someone told me, I'd, I'd still be dubious and think, no, this can't be right. But I saw it with my own eyes. And I do believe that if you've got a major problem or anyone in your family, that, that you should come along um, and meet Pastor Alex. I When I came um, last Sunday, was it? Or the, two, Sundays two Sundays ago, I couldn't walk hardly at all my knees were locked and um nina said let pastor alex do whatever he does pray on your knees and i, I said no nina i don't want to do that i felt embarrassed but um he didn't even do he didn't well i don't know exactly what he did but he touched both the knees and the pain is gone there's no pain there at all just disappeared as if he had never been there and I'm over the moon about that. We went down our spiral staircase in our shop today. Yeah, it's the first time I the first time I've been down the spiral staircase probably I would say in the last two years I couldn't get down the staircase. I haven't been to church for fifty one years. The last time was fifty one years ago when the Catholic Church when I made a confession. I never went back since. Then I came to this, your church, a VPA, I can't, and all I saw was happiness and joy, and in the Catholic Church, all, all it is is depression, unhappiness, in my friend's Protestant church, unhappiness, depression, in here, total happiness. Amen. So I'm, you know, I just love it, you know. If ever present a problem, a reproach in your life, the same God they are talking about will intervene in your life. Amen. Your time has come Amen. in Jesus' name. Well, I have to thank all of you, thank you for coming to Miracle Hour. Thank you. Wow, thank Nina. You, bless you. Thank bless you, bless you. Love you all. Thank you. Thank you for watching Miracle Hour. Thank you for watching the amazing power of God. Be encouraged in your faith. This is the place where God shows his amazing power. Join us again on the Miracle Hour. Your time has come. Hallelujah. Jesus! Jesus! Um, hello, everybody. I brought Daniel with me today, Dan. And um, he's a living miracle from the God of VPA. Hallelujah! Um, this is... <laughs> Oh, that camera. He this was, is this. Oh, no, this is Daniel. That's it now. Danny was in hospital and this he was Daniel. on his deathbed. Hallelujah, Jesus. So we come here today to give the glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And um, the miracle happened when the cloth was placed on Danny's head, the impartation took place. He was in a deep, deep coma, and he opened his eyes up within the first minute Can we see the picture, of please? the cloth being put on his head. Put the head. picture away, put the picture away. Everybody was waiting, basically, for Danny to die. The doctors had more or less given up. The family were just waiting for the bad news. His best friends, everybody thought Danny was going to die. And the power of this church and the faith 
in what I feel here, I come for Danny because I didn't want him to die. I didn't want another tragedy around this man and his family. And I wanted to be something good to happen for his family to believe in God. This is too much. Shut his mouth! Jesus! Listen to me. She said, oh, I, see, I love people that Stay love up. God. Yeah, Sit down. Faith without work. So if you have it and you don't know what to use it for, you are fooling yourself. Look at her. She went to the hospital when everybody has concluded that he, 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 he will live. And she came here. He said, because this is, this is the coming here, he see his life changing. He knew, he knew there's something here. And he came and put the mantle on Danny. Danny eyes open. Then they ask, open. Imagine, if she did not go there. That's why I said, faith without work. That's why, see, that was what I was telling my, my, my able Josie today. I said, I don't like Oscar attitude of um, no, someone is crying. They are beating somebody, they say don't cry. I don't believe in it. I don't believe that they are beating somebody, they say the person must not cry. If nobody can cry. Nobody can come and just take my church from me. I said there be no with that with that reaction. What how, how will people know that that we, we are, that, that this that the crowd have see the government are made to serve us. So if we are not crying, then there's a problem with the government. So they are to make us happy on Tuesday. If you love God, shh, we are not fighting dressed well. I'm to see on my coat, I'm at, I'm at that. I come here and I believe that God was going to do something. Something happened in my spirit. And I thought, I've got to go to VPA Church. Well, that's where I've got to go because it's not going to happen where I am. And I believe God wants action. He doesn't just want prayers. He wants you to action. step out in faith. Yes. Because prayer without works is, is dead. And I come here, my friend was with me from California, and we had the night here for the all-night prayers. And it was only testimonies getting up. And I thought, now I'm going to get up with the oil and the, and the cloth, and I'm going to ask uh, Father Alex to pray for the oil and the cloth, which he did do. And I thought, right, I've got it. So I went back to the hospital, <laughs> went to see Danny the next day, and he was laying there and everything just looked exactly the same. And I thought, come on, God, come on, Jesus. And I prayed to the Father God of VPA to work his miracle in Danny's life and let him live. And I placed the cloth on Danny's head. And I just was just saying, live, live, live. Let there be life. And within one minute of the cloth on Danny's head, his eyes opened. <laughs> Shut yes. his eyes! Jesus! So, yes. And I'd been there praying before and his eyes hadn't opened. So I was there with a friend from my church that I bought here Friday night. We was praying and we were speaking in Danny's ear to just accept Jesus. And I thought, what am I doing? What am I doing? And I thought, well, we'll carry on because I was following my friend. And I thought, no, he needs something more. There's power in this church. But I don't know what you people have got. But you've got something extra in that heart. And it comes out in your prayers. And I feel it when I'm in here. I feel the anointing. I feel the... the I feel the Shut anointing. Jesus! Jesus! So, <laughs> it helps me balance my life. So, yeah, you, thank you. You, you know what? Thank you. Do you, you know what you have done for me? Yeah. You have come to encourage me. Yeah. You have come, you have come to, you have come to tell me, go ahead. Yeah. You have come to prove to me that God has come in. Yeah. And I'm telling you. God's here. 
God is here. You've, Where's I'd the say you've got the highest order of angels around what? this church. Every time I've come here with a prayer, and I've put it on the altar normally the other side. This was you before. Prayed for situations that have been terrible. Uh. It's like my prayers have been picked up and dealt with straight away. The answer comes almost immediately. And when, even financially, when our businesses have needed it, I promise you we've been in situations where we thought, where's that money gonna come from? And it's come. It's not all about money. It's about making things work for the power of good. And you can do a lot more when your lives are good. So, yeah, I honour this church, definitely. And I can't... I tell people in my shop about VPA all the time when they, <laughs> when they come in, I say, well, I go to a church in London called VPA. Because I'm in, I'm in Margate in Kent. I talk to my dad about it, my brother about it. None of them are saved. She they think dead. I'm a little bit crazy, so I've got to get them to this church. Church Jesus! Everything redeemed about you. you. 